Good morning guys and welcome to another video in marathon training. Today is Tuesday the 9th of April and tapering has begun. Oh well it did actually a week ago ever since I did my longest run ever 30 kilometers. I have been decreasing the amounts of runs that I've done and also the length of the runs because I need to prepare myself and my body fully to get ready for the actual marathon which is in four weeks at this point. Madness. <laughs> However yesterday I did go on my long run for the week which was a half marathon and I wanted to complete it a bit faster than I want to run on race day for the actual marathon so I'll put the stats for you right here on the screen wherever it makes sense for you to see. It felt amazing I really did push myself though so my legs today feel absolutely sore I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> today what I've got to do is a recovery run to really just shaken up my body and get a bit more loose and yeah I'll explain why it's important to do recovery runs because in this video what I thought would be nice to do is to share my tips and advice and just really how to get started with running. I have received a bunch of questions both on YouTube and Instagram and basically everywhere on how do you actually get started with running in general and that doesn't mean if you're training for 5k, 10k, half marathon, full marathon or just putting on running shoes in the first place and getting out the door and start running. In this video I thought it would be perfect for me to share that with you as I take you with me through the next couple of days during some more marathon training because that is what we are doing at the moment other than planning my trip to Japan and Indonesia. Anyway, before we get started with that, I just need to get myself some breakfast. So I'll catch you guys in the kitchen, make my breakfast, and then talk with you afterwards on really just how to get started with running. You actually really just need two things, your body and a good pair of running shoes. Generally speaking, I recommend for everyone to get at least two pairs of running shoes. They don't have to be anything fancy or anything special or whatever, but it's just really good to switch between multiple pairs of shoes to put the pressure differently and to get more comfortable when you run. I personally myself currently switch between three pairs of shoes because during this marathon training I am running a lot and I feel that my feet need a break from time to time to run in the same pair of shoes. So for me, it's just what feels the best. Number one favorite go-to pair of shoes. I'm sure that you guys know that are my Adidas Boston Edicero 12. These shoes are neutral running stability shoes. Well, they're not stability shoes like that, but they are for neutral stability. What I noticed the first thing when I got these pairs of shoes, bounce in the foam was absolutely incredible. I remember the first time I ran in these shoes, I just felt flying. <laughs> I've been using these shoes for a good amount of time. They are super, super worn out at this moment. Underneath, on top, and I've just put them through rain, mud, wind, storm, snow, whatever. They've been super super amazing and I've been using them for half a year now. It's actually a bit too long and I know that I need to get rid of these and buy myself a new pair. The longer you use the same pair of shoes for it, the worse they will get over time of course because you keep on using them. These are definitely not as good as when I first started running in them because they've done the job so far. Personally, I would recommend these 100%. They are my favorites. Second pair of shoes that I want to show you. New Balance Fuel Cell Propel. It's a natural pair of running shoes. Natural. It's a neutral pair of running shoes as well. Good amount of like bounce to them and the foam is actually quite thick. I was really surprised when I first got these because I just bought them on sale because I needed another pair for my running. They turned out to be really really great. Remember that when I say that I think a shoe is great, it is of course a personal preference which is why I recommend for you in general to go to a running store and get your style of running checked because these shoes that I recommend for you that I really personally like is because they fit my style of running but your style of running and my style of running are most likely not going to be the same. With that said, these shoes fit my style of running and I really really do like them. I use these shoes as well as my Boston's for really just any type of run I feel like. Third and final pair of shoes that I have got, Nike Pegasus 40. This one is the Elliot Kipchoge version. This is probably the most basic go-to, I have no clue what shoe to wear kind of shoe. I believe that most people would be able to run in this shoe and feel comfortable. It's nothing fancy at all. It's literally just a sports trainer that has been improved for running if you ask me. I would not recommend for personally my style 
style of running and in general to run really long distances in these ones because I feel that they lack a little bit of support and more of a um, technical build the shoe itself in order to support very long and demanding runs. I mostly use them on my recovery runs or my easy runs. I'll just wear these for whatever reason. I will most likely not get another pair of these ones. They've been great so far but nothing extraordinary or any type of shoe that I feel that I cannot live without. After this marathon I will train to complete a sub 1 hour 40 or 1 hour 30 half marathon but for that type of running and those training sessions which will be highly focused on high pace, high effort, speed runs, intervals and all of that stuff I need another pair of shoes that I will not be using on any other runs than tempo runs and speed runs. I will get those once the marathon is done because right now that is what my mind is set on. Anyway it's time for me to get myself ready and then I will head out on today's recovery run. I of course need to let you know that the shoes that I will be running in Boston's because that is what I feel like they're comfortable and today's just an easy recovery run so I'll get these on get myself ready and then catch you guys on the road it may seem like the last thing you want to do the day after a long run to head out on another run but trust me recovery runs are really important and I personally feel that it has made a huge difference in order for me to keep performing and for me to recover well. But it's only if you run the recovery run the right way. I always run at an easy pace, meaning that it's an easy effort for me to give so I can keep a conversation like I am right now. And then that I don't go too far, too fast and just, yeah, take it slow because these runs are literally all about loosening up in my body. I finished my run today. I did just about 8 kilometers in sub 41 minutes. What I learned through marathon training and that I wish I knew so much sooner, how important it is to do different types of runs and the benefits of doing each type of run. Obviously you will be doing a lot of long runs to train your mentality in order to run long distances and your endurance, but you also need to do interval sessions to push yourselves in terms of gaining more speed. If that's something you want to improve of course, just like fart legs. Fart legs is a Swedish word for speed play which is basically a run that you do in which you play with different types of speeds and you really test your different pacing which is so much fun in my opinion and then you also have the tempo runs which are runs that you do at a certain tempo and pace to try and maybe hit your 10k pace your marathon pace my overall point and really just what I want to say is that making this marathon training as enjoyable as possible has so much to do with me switching up the types of runs that I do because if I only were to do long distance boring runs by myself, it would be really boring to do the marathon training. And if I only did speed runs, fight legs, tempo runs, I would get bored with that too. It's just really important to switch it up for your health, obviously too, and to improve in the best way possible. However, the recovery run is done for now and I'm gonna have my shower, get home, get changed. Yeah, then I'll catch you guys once I get there. for today. I'm having potato salad on the side with sour cream, coriander and baby peas. I think they're called that. And then I have a beautiful slice of rye bread with avocado underneath a little bit of a runny egg. It's a bit hard for me to show you. And then I have one of my absolute favorite protein bars from Barbell. It's the salted chocolate. Absolutely divine. As I make my lunch and I am really, really hungry and just about to dig into this, I needed to mention something. And that is because when you are wanting to become good at running or just getting started with running, you will be surprised with your hunger levels and I still feel that way. When you are running a lot you need a lot of food to sustain your energy sources obviously because running is really really tough on the body. The more running you do the more eating you need to do as well because you gotta fuel the engine. I am aware that in general there is a high focus on carb load and pasta, rice, bread and carbs, carbs, carbs. I am someone who regularly posts my Instagram stories with the hashtag carb load but don't take it too seriously because you do need other sources of food as well in order to be good at running. You need the protein to recover your muscles 
muscles, you need the healthy fats to support your fat deposits on the body that you need everything, not just carbs only. It is just so important for me to mention. With all my Instagram stories aside, I do eat intuitively. I do not follow a diet, do not stick to anything special or fasting or whatever, because some of you may know my story with a bit of struggles with my mental health, I believe. Eating intuitively and freely and just having whatever I want is just what works best for me. And today, this was what I was craving for lunch. I have been posting a few of what I eat in a couple of days videos and especially with this marathon training. I've showed you as much of a broad aspect of my diet as I possibly have been able to. No days are the same, ever. <laughs> I also need to say that running has proven to heal my relationship with food as well. I have realized that the more running I do, the more I need to eat and the hungrier I get. And it's just, yeah, running has been very beneficial to me in order to restore a more healthy relationship with food, I would say. Okay, to, I tried to do a pull, but it's been in the fridge, so it's too cold. <laughs> Doing all of these runs and eating and eating and eating made me realize the huge impact your diet has on your running. There is no way on earth I can train for a marathon without eating a lot and still keep on being healthy, having my period. As for speaking, I just got that today. The more you move, of course, the more you need to eat. And I just honestly think it has been beneficial to me. Not to say that if you have struggles with food, you need to run a marathon in order to heal it. It's not what I'm trying to say. But you will be surprised when you start getting into running. And the more you run, the more food you need to eat. Without that, you're not able to perform at all. Not to forget to talk about hydration. I have been really bad my entire life at drinking enough water in general. And now that it's getting hot outside, I feel a huge difference from running in 10 to 12 degrees from running in my minus five to zero degrees. I sweat a lot more and when I get back home, I instantly just pour myself a huge glass of water and just down it. <laughs> the last thing you want to feel is dehydrated, trust me. So yeah, keep yourself fueled, have a good sustainable diet that works for you. Eat whatever you want, whenever you want, as always, like I do. <laughs> Remember to stay hydrated, prioritize to get enough both carbs, but also fats and protein. It's just so important to keep everything at balance. never gonna get bored with matcha, not ever. I bet you guys are not even surprised that I'm having one at this point because it has become a daily thing for me and it still is and will continue to be for a very long time. It is the afternoon right now and my plans are that I will be doing this much, <laughs> absolutely nothing. And that led me to think about how important it is to rest when you are wanting to become good at running. When you are not running, you are recovering. If you don't allow your body to rest, repair its muscle, build up yourself even stronger, you will not be able to benefit from the run that you just did at all. I tell myself this because I am someone who has struggled in the past with letting myself rest and recover. It's a learning to myself as well and I feel that with this marathon training I really did realize just how important it is to rest when you are running. If you don't allow your body to rest you will ultimately just break down and become even weaker. Especially if you're just new to running and starting out I do recommend that you have more rest days than you think you need. It is a big change if you're not used to running to start running. It has a huge impact on your body in amazing ways of course and I really miss the starting point of when I first began running because the development I saw in the beginning was crazy but I was also so eager and I just wanted to keep going and keep running but um remember your rest days it is so important so what am I going to do now I'm going to enjoy some time off for dinner I'm going to head out by myself to a great restaurant I actually feel really good about having dinner by myself I know it can be a bit intimidating for some people just going out in public to eat but you are listening to someone who has been solo traveling for a lot of time in my life but yeah remember to rest and recover from your runs no matter how short how long how intense whatever remember to rest mm. and have a matcha if you haven't already <laughs> Yeah.
So I've made it to the gym because today I'm going to do a very, very relaxed and super chill full body workout. And I wanted to talk about going to the gym alongside with running as well because it is really, really important. Long story short, in order to get better at running, you need to, of course, run but also do other stuff than just running. There are multiple reasons as to why it's important. When you are running, you are primarily using your lower body because you're using your legs and your core, but you actually also use your upper body, your arms to drive you forward. So when you go to the gym, and you train the entire body including your upper body as well those muscles groups will of course get stronger and will be able to perform better which will make the overall feeling of your runs be way more comfortable and you'll just feel stronger trust me my most important reason as to go to the gym is though that you want to prevent injuries because when you strength train you strengthen both your muscles but also the joints and the stronger your joints are the less likely you are to experience injuries if you're of course running in the right way and remembering to recover and rest and refuel and everything as well. Becoming good at running I guess is a big puzzle and something you have to find your way through and the amount of runs that you feel will be good for you and gym sessions are completely individual but I do suggest that maybe you start up with some sort of plan and then adjust and adapt to your way just like I do with my marathon training. As mentioned these are of course just my own personal experiences and my advice that I feel could be helpful to you but um, yeah overall I just suggest remember to hit the gym. I'm gonna get this workout done and then I have a really really exciting package to pick up so I will do that on my way home and show you what I have in store for the marathon actually I know that I have done a lot of hauls lately on my YouTube channel and showed you guys a lot of stuff that I've been buying um, but trust me the shopping spree is ending after the marathon. I do personally believe that buying the right pairs of shoes and getting the right clothing and something that you feel good in will make your runs so much better. You need to be comfortable with the clothing that you're wearing in order to run comfortably. On my Instagram account I do post a lot of stuff what I wear on my runs and you guys would have noticed that I wear a lot of clothing from Say Sky, which is partially gifted so I have to say thank you. In my opinion it is the most comfortable running clothing that I have ever tried and that is why I completely stick to it. Especially I am really happy with my jackets. They have just super lightweight jackets and they are super super comfortable. For the actual marathon I do have an outfit in my head and that is when this unboxing becomes relevant. Lately I have been buying out of stuff to prepare for the marathon in terms of clothing and now shoes is coming up and I did just buy a running vest from Salomon which which was really hard to find but guess what i managed to find another one this one is white though it is another vest than the one that i previously bought both in terms of colors but also a model vo sense pro 10 with flask that was hard for me to say hydration vest and it's white or oh, well white and grayish it has a back pocket as well which is apparently able to fit 10 liters in it but i will most likely not be using it was it necessary for me to get another vest when i already have another one no but do i feel like buying it yeah so that is why i did what i told you guys yesterday about my running shoes i have been loving my boston edicero 12 but it's about time for me to let go of them and introduce a new pair for the marathon which i will be using on the race day. One key thing I want to say though is that I stand by the important saying of nothing new on race day. It's really important. I did buy myself yet yeah, a new pair of shoes but I already know them because I've been running in them for such a long time. I will break them in beforehand so do a couple of short runs in them and then run the marathon. So I'm not gonna use them entirely newly fresh on race day. Don't worry. But it's a new color. Ooh, it's so fire. Literally fire. What on earth? To me, this is probably the most beautiful shoe I have seen in my entire life. I already feel now that I touch them, this is a fresh new shoe compared to my other ones. It's a world of difference. So yeah, I'm sure that will do me good on race day. Aside from clothing and shoes and all that stuff, there are a lot of extra things that comes with running as I bet you will be slowly introduced to as you start running yourself and as you may engage a bit in the social media world of running. Most likely you would know that Strava is probably 
probably the number one most popular running app on the planet. It's kind of become Instagram for runners. You can post your runs, everyone can like react to them and you can join run clubs and stuff. I personally don't use it because I've been using Nike Run Club for such a long time. Nike Run Club is my favorite app in terms of my running because you can do guided runs. I'm not talking about guided with routes but audio guided runs that will motivate you like crazy. It's madness. The runs are set for like certain goals like terms of distance or speed or just random runs that are encouraging. Try it out yourself. You will not regret it. It's honestly the best running app I have come across in my entire life. Besides from running apps, I do also get some questions about whether if I use a watch or a heart rate monitor, but I don't. I don't use a watch because I don't know which one to get and the watch that I want to get should be one that I could connect to both Spotify, Nike Run Club and my phone, I guess. So that is why I haven't gotten any yet. Honestly, it's just not one of my top priorities because shoes, running vest and clothing, that's what I need at the moment and I can survive just as fine on my runs without a watch for now. I may get it at some point. It would be really cool. A heart rate monitor is not something that I use so if you ask me what is my heart rate on the runs that I really push, I have no idea. I would have to stand and count <laughs> myself. I just guesstimate and say like high, low, medium. I can obviously feel that if I do a speed run and I feel that I'm about to choke out my own lungs, my heart rate is probably pretty high compared to when I'm able to talk on a chilled run like I did yesterday. I think it's pretty evident that there are lots of extra stuff to running than just shoes and clothing, both in terms of your yeah, app, vest, extra stuff, even the, like um, what you call them, electrolytes and gels and stuff you can eat on your runs and all that stuff. It's just become very, very a lot <laughs> and it's a lot to take in. So if you're starting out with running yourself, I understand why you're confused if you are so, but just keep in mind, you really just need a good pair of shoes and some comfortable clothing and yourself and just get out and run. Don't worry about not having a vest or heart rate monitor like I don't or watch. It's actually unnecessary in order to run. You just need yourself, your shoes, your body and motivation, of course. Anyway, for the rest of the day, I plan to do absolutely nothing. So I'm just going to chill, relax, have dinner with my family at some point. and just some advice that I wish that I knew before I started taking my running seriously and really just getting into it. If you are working towards a goal or just wanting to improve your running, remember that it can take days, weeks, months or even sometimes years to get to the result that you are wanting to. If you are at some point and you feel like you've made no progress at all, look back at your previous runs and just think about where your starting point actually was. Remember that the progress will not show day after day or whatever but it will be much much more beneficial to you if you look at the greater picture. You will see growth and development and improvement in your running if you stay consistent and if you keep up with your training of course. Just remember that it won't happen overnight. That is completely fine. Progress takes time and with that said it's just so important that you only compare your runs to yourself and not to anyone else. If you are doing a 5k run at a pace in which you feel really good about but then see someone else they did a 5k pace much faster than you did. It's so toxic easily to get influenced by the comparison in the wrong way because we should share our successes and the runs we do with the sole purpose of finding joy in it, being proud of ourselves regardless of how fast other people run. I myself have struggled a little bit with yeah being 100% happy and satisfied with my own pace if I see someone run faster than me. That is just not sustainable to compare yourself to other people when you run. Only compare yourself to your own runs and remember that you are making progress in your own body you're putting on the shoes yourselves and you should only compare your runs to yourself. And that leads me to another point which is that your starting point is completely individual and personal to you and different to everyone else's. If you're someone who has never run before and you try to work your way up to run a 5k or 10k or whatever, you have your own level of fitness. It will not be the same to anyone else. So remember that if you are training for a 10k or a 5k half marathon marathon like I am, 
I should not compare myself to someone who has ran five marathons to me who has not ran any marathon yet. I should not compare that this is my starting point as a first time marathoner to someone who has been running marathon for years. You get my point. <laughs> you should only be running because you enjoy it for the right reasons for yourself. Yes, some runs will feel super hard and if you are training for a specific goal like I am, you may not want to run on all those days, but in the end you will remember why you did it. Be happy to have stuck to a training program if you are training for something specific, but if you're just running for the sole purpose of running, that is amazing and that is what I have done for a long time. Always run for the right reasons. Run for yourself and run for the feeling of joy, the happiness it brings you and yeah, let me know in the comments what the reasons are for you to be running and maybe we can help inspire one another. I think that is the only right way for me to end this video. I really hope that you did enjoy this video and that you found it helpful to yeah, hear my tips and advice on how to start running. I'll see you very soon again.